Hey, what's going on everybody? Rob Satch from Feedback Ranch. I wanna talk more about this outsourced accountant model. Now, in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about one of the core ways that you can portray and convey a ton of value but to, to a person while you pique their interest. So you meet a prospect, you pique their interest about how you can make their life better, then they'll actually take a meeting with you, right? And I'm always talking about do kind of three or four stages of meetings. You want to prospect, drive towards a connect meeting. Once you get a connect meeting, you want to do an analysis. Once you do an analysis, you want to kind of unveil and show, hey, here's here's what I think would be a good idea for you. Um, small, medium, large, what would you like? And here's how I think I can make your life better, right? But in that, um, I want to talk about the value that you add because there's a core fundamental disconnect between a lot of you accountants about the difference you can make in people's lives and business owners' lives because you think like an accountant. You don't think like a, a value-focused person. And I want to talk about that. And that's not a shot at you. It's just a reality. So when I grew our tax and accounting firm here in Lakeville, when I would intersect with people, it was like fish in a barrel. Like our competitors, if I could get in front of a business owner, I had like a 95% close rate. You know why? Because I spent years in training of sales training, and then I was a financial planner for 10 minutes, but years of training with my father who sold Caterpillar machinery, which Caterpillar is always 30% more money, higher dollar, but they help business owners. They help business owners with machinery that has lower downtime, and if you can connect value and productivity and efficiency to your machine, which that's what they're all about, their machine and their solution, getting parts out quicker, having proactive uh, maintenance packages and whatnot, they actually save you money. It may be 30% more up front, but in the long run, you're going to save money. And people that work with Ziggler understand that that's the goal and that's usually what happens. So I grew up with this value first. It's not about what something's like costs. It's about what's it worth and worth is all about value. And one of the things that accountants and tax people think of, you just, I bet if you go look at your website right now, I might be wrong, but I bet over 60% of you your website is a bunch of listing out of the services that you provide. And it talks about you. And it talks about what you do. And what it doesn't do is it doesn't do this key thing. And this is something we focus on in our four-step process. You don't talk about how you make the client's life better. Now, I think the three value props, I give this away for free, right? Mitigate their taxes and maximize, and maximize their wealth. That's what we're going to hit on here. Number two, save them time and money by doing the services for them. Be a staff alternative. Number three, keep them protected and keep them compliant, okay? If you do those things and you can actually put dollars to them, they're going to want to sign up with you. In fact, if you look at, you know, let's just say just the middle one, for example. Let's just say a business owner decides that he's going to hire part-time Patty and pay her, you know, $18 an hour. He's going to have her come in two and a half days a week. So let's just say it's 15 hours, right? So... Um, boy, I don't even know where my calculator is. Let's just say, so for $18 an hour times, wow, this is great content, 14 hours a week times four. That's like $1,000 a month if she comes in for like a day and a half. You start doing the math on labor, labor's expensive, guys. If you can save that and you can do it all, there's a litany of value that you're able to add. You're able to make sure that they don't have to hire a somewhat competent person uh, to do financial transactions. That could be everything from the bookkeeping to the payroll to the you know, onboarding, onboarding their new employees, paying their subcontractors. You can do that for them. And not only that, by if you, if you serve it up. and So right there, if you can just replace that one part-time person, they're going to spend $1,000 a month on that. Then they're going to have self-employment taxes. They're, they're going to have to lead and manage them. They're going to have to develop them. They're going to have to be on the hook for benefits if they want to. Like That's hard or you can be a write-off service for them, right? So there's value you have to connect. And one of the ways that you have got to connect value is in the way that the financial planners and Dave Ramsey are, okay? So that first one, when it comes to mitigate your taxes and build wealth, I'm gonna challenge you right now that if you are a CPA, a tax and accountant, you gotta, you gotta wake up a little bit. You have got to be having some serious conversations about the financial picture of your customers, okay? And that means everything from, my neighbors are shooting out fireworks. Um, that means everything from figuring out how much debt they're in to what kind of investments they have to figuring out are they protected? Okay, do they have insurance? You don't have to sell them investments. You don't have to push them into investments. You don't have to push them into insurance. But doggone it, if you can add the kind of value that it usually takes, 
uh, or that is usually delivered by having a simple conversation, you're going to realize that you're worth way more than what you assume. Now, let me prove it to you real quick, okay? Um, in a way, financial financial health when it comes to just building wealth is a lot like losing weight, right? Usually all you need is somebody to come in and look at you standing on the scale and you're embarrassed, right? Take your shirt off and walk around and let your big old love handles like me and your big old gut hang out and all of a sudden you're a little more embarrassed, right? There's nothing like weighing in every single day and publicly doing that to really get some accountability going, right? As a CPA, your clients look to you to be the authority, okay? You actually have a coveted position that every insurance person and every investment person wishes they had. They trust you, you know why? Because you're not out there to sell them a bunch of crap, right? You're actually worthy of trust in a, in a way that most financial services companies are not. So what you really owe it to your customers is to add some financial coaching alongside your services. This has to be done year round. You cannot only do tax returns. You cannot only do bookkeeping. You've got to step back and be a voice in their life to help them build financial wealth. And there's a couple of gotchas at the end of implementing your great tax strategies too. If you implement too many S-Corp strategies and you never have a conversation about taking that um, save taxes and putting it into a retirement fund or at least something that gets compound interest, all of a sudden they're going to retire and their social security check is lower and you just hose them. They had no idea that their social security check was going to be low. I have bumped into 60, 65 year old dudes, 70 year old guys, old entrepreneurs who are so mad at their accountants because they're still working. I can see it. It was at this Bible study that I went to. I met this business owner. He was a plumber. He's like, yeah, me and my son have been doing it forever. I wish I could get out, but my accountant pulled some shenanigans and I don't get a social security check. And he never helped them invest. So these guys get to the end of their careers. Their bodies are broken and they have no wealth built up because their accountants failed them. Don't fail your clients, guys. So here's the thing that you should do. I would just do what Dave Ramsey does, okay? And this isn't this isn't cheap stuff. This is, don't click off here, okay? He's got the seven baby steps, right? Build up a little bit of cash, pay off your debt, build up more cash, and then what you do is you start investing, you pay off your house, and yada, yada, yada. But at its core, do a financial snapshot. Find out how much do you have in checking. Like when you sit down with people, lean in and get uncomfortable, right? They may not love it. Your goal should not to be to close the customer. Your goal should be to deliver amazing freaking value to your customer. That should be your goal. And if you pursue that relentlessly, whether it's through the, the any of those three, I could dive into each one. If you pursue that relentlessly, they're going to throw their money at you because you're worth it and you're authentically worth it, guys. But if if you don't sit down and lean in to add value and get into that uncomfortable space to say, hey, you know what? As part of this, I'm going to do a financial snapshot. Now, we're going to get a little personal here. In fact, nobody's going to know more about you. I'm going to know everything about you because I'm going to see your checking account. I'm going to see your bank account. I'm going to know everything. I'm going to know what you buy. I'm going to know how many times you go to the liquor store. I'm going to know everything, right? You, you can get real poignant with that if you want to, or you can just softly say, I want to take a financial snapshot because here's the deal. I, my goal would be that I can help add value to help build financial momentum in your life. Because if I don't, you might get to the end. And I've heard stories about guys not having enough social security check to actually retire on. You'll work too long, okay? So I want to help you. So in that, do this snapshot. Find out how much they got in checking. How much income is that family making, right? What's the spouse making? What's he making? How much cash flow is coming in? How much are they spending? If they don't know, hook them up to your accounting stuff and show them their basic family uh, spending. Like, Poke into that a little bit. Help them out. Help them identify what that is. Find out how much they have in savings. Find out what they have for investment accounts. So you want to identify each investment account. How much is there and what is it invested in? Here's another thing. You owe it to your clients to push in to find out, are they invested in appropriate investments for however old they are? Now, this might sound... You know, a lot of business owners are kind of conservative leaning in terms of the risk that they take when it comes to their investments, right? They will notoriously roll the dice on some things and not on others. It's, it's funny. You can see all sorts of like, they're just, they're like a lever pulling machine sometimes, right? But what you'll see is that sometimes they'll, you know, they'll be 30 years old and because they watch a lot of Glenn Beck, they've been sitting in like gold the whole time earning nothing 
and uh, not realizing they're paying super high fees, right? Or they might be a retiree about to retire. Maybe they're these baby boomers and Gen Xers that are getting ready to retire. It's still, I get nervous about, you know, we got this volatility in the market. The market's way up. Like, do they have a cash plan figured out? Like, do they have the first five years of retirement kind of figured out so that they can continue to grow, but they have some protection? Like, maybe they should have some you know, a 60, 40 split instead of all stock market participating stuff, or maybe in this climate, whatever you get the point, you got to find out if they're kind of in the directionally correct stuff. And you can be that voice to help them understand that. Like if you're going to do like any retirement, you're going to have to have X, Y, Z amount. You should figure that out. Okay. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but you owe it to them to do that snapshot to find out where are they and then encourage them participate in compounding interest for crying out loud. If you don't participate in compounding interest, you're failing yourself. It doesn't mean you have to use a qualified plan. Get them in a brokerage account. Folks, you don't have to use a 401k plan to invest. You can just invest and and go after like um, qualified dividend funds out of Vanguard and Schwab. They have low fees. They're tax sensitive and they're great, right? They're paying off dividends or they could be tax sensitive funds. So they don't have to do... 401ks, IRAs, Roth IRAs, just make them invest so they get compounding interest and reinvest the dividends, reinvest the the growth and whatnot. That's super important. Here's the second thing you owe it to them. Help them save up. Like out of sight, out of mind, most Americans right now just, they got so much stuff sucking out of their bank account, they don't have a clue. Make them save. Just encourage them somewhere in there. Find out if they are saving. If they're not, have them sock away whatever amount makes sense and put it somewhere that takes three days to get the cash. Put it in a money market account in Vanguard so that there's some sort of like behavior that has to change for them to actually get the money. And they will thank you. Five years will go by, they don't even know it. Next thing you know, they're sitting on 100 Gs in cash and you're like, oh, you, yeah, you forgot that we did that, right? Here's the next thing. I think that you should lean into life insurance, long-term disability, short-term disability, and health insurance. Folks, it is so confusing to figure out health insurance right now Find a trusted advisor, figure out the exchange. You owe it to them. You're their financial coach. You're at least the accountant that understands it. Make sure that they're figuring out health insurance. Make sure that they understand how the exchanges work. How do they write that off? Can they pay it off in the business? Give them good advice about that, right? How do they use an HSA properly? Lean into that because the the financial advisor, he's going to act like he does, but he doesn't. Once that money's rolled over, they might have their annual checkup maybe, but chances are it's not happening. And if it is happening, they're probably not leaning into anything that doesn't get them paid, okay? Um, So talk about health insurance. Make sure they have term life insurance, right? Make sure that if they die, their kid is taken care of. Make sure that they explore what does it mean to have long-term disability. It might be expensive, but doggone it, as a business owner, I'm quite concerned that if I get hit in the head, my wife is going to have to know everything. Now, she works in my business, so she understands it. But long-term disability is a big thing for their family. Now, the next layer of these protections, so if you die or if you get sick or if you can't work, those are important things. Not because the insurance pay- salesman said so, but because all you got to do is be on the other side of this and it's ugly. Now, if they're in a partnership, you can add value another way by diving into should they have a, what happens if your partner can't work because they get hit in the head? What happens if your partner dies, but him and his estate still own half the business? You should look at life insurance as a a buy-sell agreement. I'm not saying it's a great idea. Sometimes they're so expensive, it's stupid. Maybe what you need is is to save up in each other's estates so that you can buy each other out, have some sort of just legal buy-sell agreement. But you have to think through what happens if you get disability. If you have business partners, you should probably have long-term disability taken out on each other and pay it out of the business. Um, And I know some guys that do a really good job at this. Um, There's all sorts of great investment and insurance people out there. There's a lot of crooks though too. So be careful. Shop around. Get that figured out. Um, But add that value to figure out as a business owner what happens, especially if you're in a partnership, if one of you dies or gets sick or or can't work, you should get that figured out. So by adding that value, you're going to do a huge thing. Here's the last thing. I'm going to move really quick. Help them figure out like their mortgage. It's so silly. But if you sock away, you know, $200 to $800 a month extra towards a 30-year mortgage, which everybody's got these 30-year mortgages, right? Because we all wanted a ton of house and we get a ton of house and whatever. But help them pay that off. You know, if you just had somebody with like a $350,000, $400,000, which some of you are like, that's not very much. Some of you are like, that's such a big house. Go 
I got these clients in San Francisco. It's like, holy cows, every house is a million dollars or more. And over here, it's like 350000 gets you a pretty big house. Um, but if you put extra towards that or if you aggressively pay that off, some people are like, oh, it's a cheap, that's cheap money. I don't want to, I don't want to pay extra towards a 4% mortgage. But if you start doing the math, man, you can save a hundred G's over 10 years really quick. And then you can save up some cash and, and get some cash back. So maybe encourage them to attack their mortgage a little bit better. Again, look into the Dave Ramsey seven baby steps. I think if you help them build up a six month cash, then attack your debt as hard as you can get rid of consumer debt. You start showing what your, your mortgage, your vehicle loans and, and all of your student debt, the, the, uh, interest that you're paying. There's two types of people, those that earn and those that pay interest. Make them people that earn interest, right? If you add that value and you start adding up the, the different layers there, you're going to see that you can truly impact their life and it's meaningful. Now, I'll, I'll stop there, but there's some specific things that I'll, I'll be putting in the comment section. It's not quite finished yet, but there's some specific value that every investment advisor and every insurance guy um, kind of acts like they're adding, but you know, look at fees of their investment funds. You don't have to sell them investment and give them advice on investment, but help them see the fees. They're all in fees. A lot of times you have mutual funds and then a wrap fee going to the investor. Sometimes you'll, you'll bump into clients. They're paying like 4% on their investments where they could be all in at like 0.8% on a Vanguard fund. And even at 0.8 or 1.2%, they could be getting advice from a Vanguard person. Um, Schwab is a great, spot too. They have these cheap index funds. I'm telling you, these are great values that you should put people towards. If you start doing the future value of 30 years at six and a half percent versus getting 8% 30 years, you know, if they get an old 401k, it's hundred G's and 30 years later, if they're 30 years old and then they're 60, you're going to save them so much money in fees and nonsense. It's going to be stupid. Um, so that's a big way that you can do check out their mortgage, encourage them to pay a little bit extra. And if you make two little tweaks there, let's say you save them a percent and a half on their investment account, you have them pay off their mortgage 10 years early, you might save them three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars in interest payments or paid fees that they don't need to. I'm serious. This is serious stuff here, guys. Um, and if you position yourself to be in one of your three things, again, mitigate taxes and build wealth save them time and money by doing the services for them, keep them protected and compliant by doing stuff right. And, and looking at insurance, that'll be helpful. So hopefully this helps you. If you add that value and you say, hey, it's 1500 bucks a month for us to work together, they're gonna view this as a no brainer and you will close more deals. Good luck. God bless you guys. Go out, take action in your business. Call us. We'll set up a website. We have some affordable plans where we can set up websites with messaging and calls to action and email campaigns and Google ads that will get you results. And doggone it, this is my Milton Friedman shirt, Lib Free. You know, right now we're in this, this hot contested time. And uh, no matter what, I love Democrats. I love Republicans. I genuinely, I love people. I love you guys. A lot of us don't see eye to eye when it comes to politics, but we got to remember a couple things. We, we all want to have a meaningful career or a meaningful life. We all want to have great relationships. We all want to be or have great family, right? Let's all work towards being good, great family. And let's be able to argue, argue it out, argue and debate and, and argue hard because ideas and precision ideas matter but then we can forgive each other. And, and I think that's one of the things that I've realized that I'm bad at. I will engage and kind of debate with people, but then I don't get the opportunity to intersect with them in a good way. So hopefully, we, I think we should all be able to argue hard and then forgive each other and get over it and treat each other right. We can disagree on business and in politics and still place value on people and love them no matter what. God bless, guys. Good luck.